Hello YouTube, this is Dexter Roll here with a brand new deck profile. I'm here with uh, Dermot Ryan and his raccoons. He went X2 today at regionals, which I'm on the bumpy train backwards, uh, back to Galway, and uh, he done really well. He, as I said, he went X2 uh, with a budget deck like raccoons. Uh, cool Matt, he's shown budget players can do whatever they want on a budget and they can do pretty well. Uh, what were your losses against, first off? Uh, my losses were against Burning Abyss and the Birds. Ah, so uh, against two meta decks, he, he just couldn't uh, build up. But did you beat some uh, good decks? Yes, I've had a few good decks. There was uh, uh, heroes. Uh, a lot of mass heroes, yeah. Yeah, there was mass heroes, and um, there was a few budget decks that I also played, like um, uh, Utopia. Uh, oh, rank up Utopians. Uh, okay, so <laughs> obviously the battle of the budget players. Uh, yeah. uh, this guy lost in his later rounds, uh, so he done very well in his earlier rounds and uh, just incredible performance. I'm gonna go get straight into the deck and go straight into the monsters and uh, I'll show you why this deck can stand for the meta as well and uh, Dermot will show me why as well. Okay, so raccoons, three baby raccoon Pompoko. Okay, uh, so Pompoko is uh, the searcher, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, very useful because. Basically, your opening turn is one of your best moves because you'll get out Tan Tan, this guy, yeah. and Tan Tan will let you search for any other beast. So this is the ba these are the baby raccoons. These are only actually two ra baby raccoons in the deck. The other one is Sunday Sixty. We'll show you him later. But well, these kind of combo together to kind of like make little plays that can go pretty well. The thing about it is though they have their little cousins that Konami has decided to introduce for some reason, and. Um, their cousins are the mystical beasts. Yeah, They're okay. A bit strange, but uh, if you look at this guy, he actually has great synergy with the rest of them. Yeah, okay. So, if I if, let me get this straight, because uh, I'm sure an awful lot of players don't know how raccoons work. They're not. They haven't been in the eye of the meta, so a lot of this is new to people. This guy searches a raccoon and sets it, right? Am yeah, I correct? Search. I'm saying special summons and face down, and it searches this guy. He's your main target. Am I correct? Yes. And this guy, when he's flipped, uh, can special summon any level two beast monster. This guy is kind of like a, a wolf bark. It has a discard cost. However, it's much better because uh, the discard cost can be stuff like, as, I'll sh as you'll see later, a cerebral, which can be pluses, or it can actually make sand days, which we'll show you later as well. So, what's up next? Our. Okay. Uh, Valerie Fong's little cousin, Kalantosa, and now this guy is very good. I like him. Kalantosa is. What's, what does Kalantosa do exactly? So when he's special summoned by the effect of a beast, he can blow up one card on the field. Okay. Which is really useful. Like, uh, against Clifford's, you can blow up a scout. Um, if you're going first, and it's the very first duel of the match, you just have a set card, it flips up and you immediately special summon this guy. Yeah. His effect will immediately activate, and a lot of players won't really know what's kind of going on. Yeah. So you basically have your choice of what's out in the field to blow up. Uh, originally, Tosa was kind of... He was a bit lackluster because... He's a, he's a... Sorry about that. He's a very dead card because his effect needs to be like in the hand. Yeah. But that's what Valerie Fawn is her, right? Yeah. Scott? So his effect... When he special summons him from the grave, he can blow up something as well, which is pretty useful. Um, then, so uh, so these guys are your, these guys are kind of like a main engines, the two mythical beasts and the two raccoons, yeah. and these all work great in tandem with each other. Yeah. They're, this if it's dead, this guy works, this works great with this, this works great with this, yeah. and this works great with everything if they're dead. It's important to also note that this guy is a tuner, which is very yeah. useful, and an earth tuner. Well, a lot of what we're going to show you guys later, I'm not going to get in the extra deck now, but this deck can very easily make beast, or an Achoria beast, which is so incredible this format. It beats Clifford's. It's very good against Shadows and very good against other decks that rely on spell Elemental cards. Hero, spell uh, exactly, match changes. It's, it's, it's so many decks rely on spell cards, and especially the upcoming deck with a lot of hype called Necros, which are coming out very soon and in just a few days' time, which also rely extremely heavily on spells. So, obviously, we, we're not going to end that now. We'll have a look at your extra deck later. Uh, but yeah. this is your kind of main engine, and you have a few more monsters. Can you show us those monsters and yeah. show them oh, that of course. Uh, so, Wind Up Kitten now. Okay. I'd probably like to run a second one of this and it's a very useful card. It's a compulse on legs. It can return one face-up monster on the field to the hand. Or is it face-up or... No, just one monster. That's pretty Okay, useful. so even more broken. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bro that's, even that's more broken useful. than on the side. Okay, um... um 
And this guy can be brought back with Valerie Fawn and then get his effects a lot of times yeah. and stuff like that. It's the great thing, combos. The thing about him though is that the two of these are very similar, as in they both remove a threat. But when you're special summoning off Tan Tan, this lad's effect is immediately active. Whereas this one you have to activate on your own turn. So this one may be more versatile, but this one yeah. is sometimes better because of its instant activation. Yeah. Okay. You can use this, if you draw it, it's an instant use, which is pretty useful. So, and then there's the two little brothers here. Okay, so this is Sea Koala and Tree Otter. Yeah. Even, even though this looks more like an otter and this looks more like a koala. <laughs> I will not comment on that. Maybe that's just me being blind. Uh, so what do these do, guys? These guys are, if I may say, these are the OTK kind of enabler guys. So what exactly do they do? Well, this guy doesn't really enable OTKs, he's just useful to have. Like, he can reduce a monster's attack to zero. Like, just say there's a wind on board, you have, you can discard this lad, special summon. Okay, okay, fair enough. Reduce him to zero and then just run over him. Which is it's useful in some way. Tree Otter, though, it w is for OTK. Yeah, it's pretty this, useful. this guy boosts by a thousand, and, yeah. and, and the way that Sandeu works with tokens, it boosts to the highest amount of. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, <laughs> this is a very coggy feel, by the way. This is this is the messiness <laughs> that Raccoon brings, the budget the budget yeah. mentality. Uh, so, yeah, these are a lot of beasts. If, if you don't mind, I'm going to just, just stack these up so that you, everyone can see. This deck runs an awful lot of individual cards uh, that have cool different effects that often work to the very. A very strong offensive nature of raccoons. All of these monsters have very low attacks. However, uh, in my experience playing against these decks, and a lot of a lot of you may not have played against them, uh, rac raccoons raccoons absolutely devastate an opponent uh, with uh, incredible OTKs. So, uh, show me the last couple of monsters, and we'll show you the why why raccoons are so good. Okay, this is one of my favorite monsters. We probably okay. shouldn't be running two. Uh, the fabled Cerbero. Okay, so tell me exactly what this guy does. Well. His effect is a bit lackluster, but it's it's useful at the moment. Uh, if he's discarded, he can be special summoned. Okay, and he he gets discarded by Valerie Fawn, is that yeah. right? Yeah, which is okay. useful. And he's not an Earth Tuner, which is useful, which is less useful, but he is a Fable, so he, he has specific targets which are pretty good. Okay, and we, and we mentioned the extra deck a lot this time, and, and the Fable, the fact that he's a Fable monster, gives him access to even power, more powerful Synchro. Very powerful. Okay, yeah. we, we yeah. won't get into those now, but we'll show you those later, and we'll show yeah. you exactly why this deck is so good. And is this the last monster? Beast King Barbaros. You're okay. You're probably familiar with him. Um, I don't use the three tributes. I prefer him as a level 8 synchro okay. with him for a Leo. A Leo, okay. So, yeah. fantastic. Uh, so, I this card, along with uh, the card that is about to be shown pretty soon, uh, can can be instantly oh it can have it has so much versatile options within this deck so yeah uh, we'll see this in a second uh, but uh, get us onto the spells and I want to see exactly why uh, why a raccoons are so potent these monsters all have little cool effects do a lot of cool different things but what exactly sets them apart from any other spammy deck that spams weak monsters and go on and show us okay so here is Obedient School, okay, so this is Obedient School. Explain exactly what Obedient School does okay. to me. Okay, so Obedient School is when you have a clear field, it doesn't matter if your opponent has something out or nothing out, you can special summon three level two beasts from your deck. Now, those some beasts, their effects will be negated, but um, they all have to have different names. Now, it could be a level one if you want, as well as a level two. So, okay. for instance, what uh, I like to do is... No, uh, hold on, uh, we'll show you the, the combos with the extra deck, because there's no point showing exactly what you can do until yeah. we've seen the extra deck, okay. because, um, believe it or not, like these cards, are you can make a lot of stuff out of a beaming skill, but once you see the extra deck, you'll know why the deck is so good, so hold on, this can this can bring on three, uh, level yeah. two, one, two, be level two or lower beasts, yeah. and you can all special summon non-beasts for the end of the for the rest of the turn. Am I correct? Yeah, yeah you're right. Okay, so we'll put this aside. We're going to put Obedient School here. This is this is the king MVP of the deck, should I say? Yeah, and very can much you, so. Can you show me what's up next? Uh, Upstart Goblin. It's okay. Uh, this is self expanding This is like a, a, li a little bit of extra draw power. Help you get into the Obedient School. Is that yeah. right? Okay. And then MSTs, well, Meta Call at the moment. And Against Cliffords, yeah? yeah. And the deck, it special summons so much that Vanity's Emptiness can kill it. So it's important to have it in there. Great, uh, great. Enemy controller. Uh, I was taking it in, and it's just because 
Uh, often I found my flip effect lads, Tan Tan, he was getting destroyed before I was using him, so I was going to just chain this, destroy him, and take their monster. Before and uh, other question about this card then. Uh, obviously, enemy control has been seeing a lot more play in this format. It can prevent ODKs. Uh, it's a very versatile card, and also put a lot of damage on board. If you st tribute a weaker monster and gain their monster and poke for a lot of damage. However, I have a question. You're playing a deck with a lot of weak monsters. Why did you choose this card over Creature Swap? Uh, I'm assuming that uh, you run Snatch Deal, which you can show us now. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah so Snatch Deal. so uh, you chose these two over Creature Swaps over anything else. Can you tell me exactly why you've done that, or is there any reason, or did you just prepare these two cards pretty much as by well, small margin? The Go thing ahead. about Creature Swap is, I do like the card a lot, but the thing is, opponents, like take Burning Abyss for example, they can have a full field of Dante's, and, or they might have something uh, weaker out, like a graph, yes. with it, and they'll just give you the graph and it'll die instantly, whereas Enemy Controller lets you pick what you want to take, and you can chain it as well, which is very useful. And its primary effect, this deck, as we already mentioned, it's got quite weak monsters, so yeah. it can be used to protect them if needed be. Yeah. Also, it's important to note that because it's a spell, it can remain in hand, and Valerie Fawn's effect for discarding, it does, that can be quite a cost, and it's useful to have something in the hand to be able to discard. And, uh, and another thing that I, I just noticed as well is it's a quick play, so it can be used on your opponent's turn, which yeah. is also a very good factor as well. Uh, so yeah, you've chosen these two over creature swaps, and you're happy with that decision? I'm off. Very happy. Okay, so well, show us what we next. Okay. Oh, actually, you were going to say something about these. Well, I prefer to creature swap, but I probably prefer something else to it. Okay, okay. So you you want to test it out a bit more after yeah. your experiences. Okay, go ahead. So what's up next? These are the okay. last spells. Ares Rock Sunrise. Uh, okay, okay, so so dragons of legends, beauties. Okay. Um. This can special summon one beast, and while these all seem weak, some of them, like Kitten or Valerie Fawn, have really useful effects. And as well as that, if you have a Naturia beast or a Leo in the grave, it'll automatically resurrect them. Yeah, you, you just said there about Leo and Naturia beast. This character can actually bring back the strong. It can, like we talk, spoke about those really strong extract monsters, and it's it's a bit. You're probably really excited getting ready for the massive reveal of these awesome monsters. <laughs> But this guy can bring any of them out once they're summoned. Well, as long as they're beast, but a lot of them are beast. That's yeah. the point. Okay, so this is a, this is a great card. There's more also a secondary effect. Um, this can actually sometimes hinder you. Uh, okay, I'll have ahead. to show you the extra deck. But your opponent's monsters lose 200 for each beast type monster in the graveyard. Yes. And I'll have to show you the extra deck to show you how that hinders you. Okay. So. But we'll see that in a bit. Um, then there's Soul Charge. And, uh, uh, Soul the, Charge we all yeah. know what Soul Charge yeah. does. And especially nowadays when your entire field can be wiped out and you're looking at Dante staring at you, it's nice to be able to recover. Or uh, a Shadow Mist. No. Okay, and then Book of Moon. Book of Moon. You're using uh, flip effects, it's yeah. chainable, it's very useful. Okay, so we know Book of Moon's a very useful card, but it's, it's actually useful in here because you have so much bases on flip effects. Yeah. Uh, Especially being a defensive versatile card, it's, it's a very good choice. Uh, is that the last spell, or do you have That's some more? That's the very last spell. Okay, so let's get into the traps, because everyone's excited to see this extra but we have to uh, go through these traps first. Fiendish Chains. Okay, so, like I said before, the, the monsters are very weak, so this can defend them, and also, something like a tour guide or a Winda. Winda kills this deck. It's very important to be able to protect it. Yeah. Um, so you've chosen this over Breakthrough Skill on the basis that... Uh, your monsters are very weak, as we all know. Yeah. So defending them, especially like a set Tantan, -tan, which because you, you don't always get obedience skill. That's, yeah. that's just a part of the deck. Uh, a set Tantan, -tan, and you can protect that as well as negating effects. And the tour guide against burning of this thing is also a very valuable one. So very good option on that. Uh, let's o get in also more. Also, another thing I like about it. Okay. Uh, it can last a bit longer, like more than one turn. Oh yeah, that makes that, sense. That, that can come in handy, especially for effect like. Uh, makes perfect sense. Uh, Shadow. Or dark law. Then I personally like trap stun. Okay. Now, it's I do cite it out because in some against some matchups it's useless. But I actually like it because it can really mess up your opponent. And as I've said in the start of the video, and we can't see the extra quite yet. But if this is a very like offensive deck, and it can OTK. Yes. And trap stun can actually just make sure that OTK is secured. Yeah, and you can also destroy their traps like oh they've yeah. activated fire lane uh, traps time exactly it's very nice 
Especially after they've paid the cost. And yeah. It's, yeah. It's a very good card. And, but it's very useful to know about Traps Turn. Sometimes it's useful to activate it at the start of the turn before they do anything. Of course. Just to protect yourself from a solid warning because you can't chain it too solid. Of warning. course. Um, Soul Drain. Uh, this is a medical, I assume? Uh, yes, but I'm not sure if it's the best medical because. You'd prefer it on the side. Yeah. The clipboards, okay. it doesn't do anything against. And even against a lot of decks, they can dodge around it and it's a face up trap. Uh, MST will easily take care of it. And it's a thousand life points. A thousand might seem li might seem like much, but it, it does add up. Especially with so many weak monsters, and you can yeah. take a lot of damage early on. You do take a lot of damage, being honest. Solemn warning. Okay, uh, you can uh, show us these three, because yeah. we're used yeah, to these yeah, three yeah, by now. Yeah. Okay, these are just the staples. There's no okay. reason not to run them unless you can really run traps. Okay, so we've gotten through this main deck. We've seen that all the little mini cute raccoons and their little friends. Uh, we've seen uh, the Almighty Obedience Guild, which doesn't take any prisoners. We've seen the hefty spell and trap lineup for a very aggressive, but very defensive and uh, controlling uh, base deck. Now, what are the what is the magic of this deck? Show on. Okay, I'm going to go through Xyz first because this is what the deck is all about. This guy is the core of the X deck. You're always going to be going to him. He's really really useful, I love him. He's the OTK enabler as well, because of, of, of what his effect is. Yes. Can you tell us what his effect is, without showing us the combos per se, okay. but just what his effect is? His effect is, you can detach one XZ material to summon a token with the attack equal to the highest monster in the field. That can be your own monster, or it can be an opponent's monster. Okay. You can use this to crash into something. It's very useful against Leo, because while Leo can't be targeted, you can just crash in at 3,100. Of course, this effect does not target, so it can actually. No, so it's really useful. And then there's secondary effect, which is the defensive one. Um, as long as there's another beast out, it can't be destroyed. And the tokens are beasts. Okay. They're also level one Earth, which is also useful. And Sandeu is a beast itself. So the two two of them form a lock to protect each other. So with, uh, without going into combos, because there's so many combos in this deck, yeah. and we just don't have the time to go through them all. Of course. Uh, I, I'll let you guys figure them out uh, by just like knowing the effects of these monsters and what Obedience Guild does. But pretty much with Obedience Guild, you can almost be guaranteed with just one extra beast in hand yeah. that you can have double Sandeu, which is a lot of damage and a hefty lock, and it's nothing to be scoffed at. Personally, though, uh, another a very a very valid option, by the way, is Notoria Beast, which the token is level one. Yes. And um, while we won't get into Notoria Beast, uh, we'll see it later in the extra deck. It's a very powerful card in this format. So let's uh, let's go on. Okay. So the rest of the Xyz are ones. You can show me them all at once because these guys are less important. They're more like the niche roles for true, different things. But they're very useful at times. Like Daiachi Gachi is very defensive. Yeah. And Downard, if you've just got a Sandeu out of the zone. No materials, maybe. Yeah, and uh, just say you've used them to crash into something, you can just overlay with the downer, which yeah. is useful. Also, if you stole a Dante with Snatch Steel or with Enemy yeah, Controller, that's uh, it's, it's a very versatile card, and obviously it's a it deserves its place in this deck. Uh, Gachi Gachi, Sky Chintori, these are defensive and aggressive, like you said. Yes, I very much like uh, Centauri, the bull, the best of the deck. <laughs> And this guy's new to the deck, okay guys? So yeah. this is uh, this is something that a lot of people might have even known about. He's, he's a bit like a Castell, he's different, but he's I like him. Um, he can't be destroyed by battle as long as he's exceed materials. And if he goes into a battle and the monster that he's battling stays on the field, you can detach one exceed material to return to the extra deck. So just say they have a Dante in defense mode, you can take 500 life points to return to the extra deck. Which is, a, which is incredible, really. Yeah. It's a very little for slow price to pay for such an incredible effect. Uh, so yeah, those are the Xyz. Do you have any more Xyz or is, is it straight onto the Synchros? There's other Xyz you can use, but I don't. Uh, okay. Obviously, the extra deck space in this deck is kind of tight. because Very tight. There's stuff like Digusto Phoenix. There's yeah, stuff I, like... I do like Digusto Phoenix. Hair of the Pure... There's so many really great options. But you I cannot know. run all of them. No. I think that's the point. And I think some are less good than others. And I guess up to the duel's personal choice. But the one thing you need in this deck, uh, above all else, is triple Sandeu. You can make three very often. And often a great card is uh, Notoria Beast, which is which you're going to show me soon, right? Yeah. But first I'm going to show you level four synchros. Because okay, go on. we have level two tuners. 
Okay, so, wow, you've run four level fours. Okay, yeah, so, so can we talk about these two first, because these are the fabled ones. These yeah. are worth Cerberal only, right? Yeah, so Cerberal's needed to make these. Um, this guy is incredible. If you have the same amount of cards in your hand as your opponent, they can't activate any effects from anywhere. And any effect they do activate, the monster or card that activated will be destroyed, which is unbelievably useful. You can use this to secure the OTK. You can make sure your hand is the same as theirs, and then just push through for an attack. Especially with a tree otter, you can uh, power him up, and then if you have another beast on hand, you can overlay to make a Sandayu, and then make a token 3300, which is incredible. Unbelievable. Yeah. Um, Kudabi is actually very similar to Sandeyu. He's a beast. If there's zero hand cards in your hand, he can't be destroyed by battle card effects. So he can form a uh, Poseido Raccoon Lock if needed. Um, he's nice. He's actually a really good option. And then Armory Arm. I'm, I'm guessing these two are for Valerie Fawn because yeah. not every Synchro is going to be with Cerebral. So. This guy is. I feel he's more secure than the army army. He's slightly more attack and if you destroy by a card effect you can resurrect one of your monsters. Okay. He's the both of them I feel are a bit lackluster because on their own they I don't think, do as much. Yeah, I think Valerie Vaughn needs his own synchro to but we'll see what happens. And yeah that's it for the level four synchros. Okay, so next you're gonna show us the level fives and show me a level six or so. Especially in the Troy Beast, because that's the card I think that really okay, makes so this deck stand now. Here's the two level 5 synchros, and they're pretty good. Okay. I, I also we all like know what I mean. Okay, yeah. okay. Sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say that obviously we all know what Armidus does, but do we all know what Natroya Beast does? Can you explain why Natroya Beast is such a great option in this meta? Okay, so so many decks nowadays e Heroes, Spell Books, uh, Noble Knights, um, and of course Clifford's. They all rely on spells. And this guy can activate his effect as many times per turn as long as you have cards in your deck. Basically what you do is you mill the top two cards of your deck to negate any spell card. Any. Regardless if it's quick play or if it's targeting him. Just say someone forbidden chalice is him. You can chain it. It's also I noticed against Clifford players they were activating upstart goblins and I felt it was important to use effect on them not to let them get any cards that might take him out. Um, bringing him out is quite easy. We, we already know, learned how to bring him out when we done the player there. It's with mm. a token, Valerie Fawn, and any other really beast. It uh, usually they has to, it has to be an Earth Christ yeah, type, obviously. So but that's, that's usually Pumpoko. like... Uh, it's usually Tantan or Pompoko, sorry, not Sandy. Yeah, no. uh, what's important to note about this card, though, is is that most of all, it's so meta relevant. Like, Right now, we're in a big three format, and that's Shadows, uh, Burning Abyss, and Cliff Hortz. And two out of this deck, those decks, it, this pretty much just kills on its own. Uh, they might have the odd out, but this pretty much wins the game. Uh, Burning Abyss, not so much, but that's just one of the matchups. Soon, Necros are going to be hitting the field, and they're, like, built to be a tier zero deck. They might not be as good as the hype suggests, but even so, they're going to be a very, very influential force in the format. And I think that this card negating everything to do with them, is just a fantastic option to have, and for such a cheap deck as well. Uh, yeah. But before we talk about the cheapness and how you felt about the deck, I want to finish off the deck list and see what else you have for synchros. Okay, so there's three final synchros, two level sixes. Now, Barkion, the cousin to Beast, he negates traps by banishing two from the graveyard. He's I rarely use him, being honest. He's just a nice option to have there. Okay, so this guy negates traps, and negating traps isn't as good this format, but no. it's still an option against certain like trap decks. Yeah. However, the one thing I noticed about this card in Beast is Beast is very easy to activate and resolve its effect, because milling is infinitely easier yeah. and more useful than banishing. Banishing from Grave, especially early game where, you're, where your opponent will have a lot of traps, uh, is, is not possible. Especially when you want to have Ayers, Rock, Soul Charge plays later on, and I find that this can be a weaker card. However, it's still a very powerful card. It's very and so is Goyo Guardian. Can you explain? Well, these are very good cards, but tell me more about them. The, the great thing about them is actually Snatch Steel. You can take an opponent's level 4 monster and then just bring out a Sandy, or sorry, a Valerie Fawn, or Fable Server in the case of Goyo, and uh, immediately get rid of them and prevent them from gaining a thousand next turn. And, um,. Gaio, if he destroys a monster, he automatically special summons us to the field. 
Um, he is, he's a good card. He definitely didn't worth being uh, banned, in my opinion. He's yeah. not strong enough. But he's definitely a formidable uh, uh, opponent. Definitely. Uh, one question about this card, and which is a very uh, point that I just thought of there, is when you snatch steal any clipboard monster, usually they'll be level 4 with 1800 attack. At least early game, when you're going to have a bigger hand with higher chance of having snatch steal than Valerie Fawn. Uh, you can steal their thing and actually sync with it and have yeah. a lot of advantage, which is very useful, of course. Uh, now, but you've won last card, I believe, and to show me, and one of my favorites, Leo. Okay, very good. Um, I was actually considering running uh, Mystic Water Dragon, just to have another level eight, so I could just summon a uh, Spable Cerberal or a Valorant Pawn, um, and then make Leo. Which, like, what I do in this deck is usually off obedience school. I'll summon three monsters. Yeah. Uh, Example. Whichever three random Yeah, names. three random different names. These used to be my favourite to bring out, actually. Um, so, with Barbaros, you just synchro with him. And you've a Leo. And then you've a Sandeu on top of that as well. Yeah, and a Sandeu with a 3100 token. That's <laughs> pretty formidable. Also, if you bring back a Tree Otter and power him up by another 1000, it's important to know that, that the token will stay at 4100. As long as you brought out the token before you boosted it. Yeah. Okay. So well now we finished with the deck list. I'm just going to ask you a few questions about the deck. Of course. Uh, how do you do? You feel this is the perfect list, or do you think it's near enough to exactly what you want? Do you think there's much room for improvement, or do you think it's pretty much there done? Um, I don't think this deck is fully there. I think it needs some way of gaining advantage. Like the the reason this deck is good is because it's different to other decks, it's special summons from the deck or the grave rather than adding to the hand. That's a weakness, but you can turn it into a strength by using cards like Thunder King Ryo or Mistake. Mistake particularly is a good continuous trap. Very good for siding, like chain it to a scout, they don't get a search. Um, but as I said again, you often find, especially for Valerie Fawn who needs to discard, you'll often find you don't have enough cards to actually utilize it. Okay, effect. so you find this card would bleed hand advantage, mm -hmm. but have an awful lot of strong field presence to make up for it, which isn't always as great against decks like Burning Abyss, but can be very good and devastating, especially with the array of powerful exceeds and synchros it may have against other decks like, uh, as you mentioned, Cliff Hortz or maybe other more rogue decks. Okay. I think in another format, this deck will. It'll do very well, especially if we get some new additions. Yeah, uh, yeah. As we've seen, that's not the picture. Valerie Fawn was recently released, which added a big boost to the deck. It did. It did. Okay, it did. so... Um, in fairness, though, that discard cost is significant. Like, it's, it's a it's significant a cost. Good, but it's definitely a better level 2 tuner than our previous Earth tuner. Which was um, Elephant? Were you oh, using Elephant? Yeah. Oh, okay. There was also Key Mouse, and a lot of people still use Key Mouse for a first turn Maturi Beast if they have no level 2 beast in hand. Yeah, right, 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 I can see that. But he's a bit dead by himself. Like, um, but uh, Valerie Fawn, he has a good effect and he's more than usable. He's definitely pliable, especially if you use the effect as a Cerebral and Special Summon. Okay, so we see an awful lot of intricacies with this deck. It has an awful lot of combos together. Do you think this is an, an, a new player friendly deck? And also, do you think this is a budget player friendly deck? Of course, we see a few uh, uh, expensive cards in the extract, but do you think this can be built quite cheaply on a budget and still be effective? Well, I think it can be built quite cheaply on a budget because I'll admit, you don't actually need a Gaio Guardian. And Barfion, he's pretty, but he's, he's not necessary. But Maturia Beast is very much so. Uh, so, uh, I mean, uh, uh, just as you say that, uh, Maturia Beast is a $5 card, and everything else is commons yeah. and rares, and Kitten is probably the other most expensive card in the deck. Would you, would you say that, like, with those two cards, and like maybe the other cards you buy, and it'll maybe arrive to $20, $25, oh. do you think it's worth it like to build a deck like that? And do you think it's a very good deck for new players to kind of learn yeah. the intricacies of the game? Maybe not pick up a very first deck, but still to kind of to go from the, the noob level to kind of... A more experienced learning curve, I guess. Well, this deck is very linear because there's you actually kind of get into your own, <laughs> shall we say, habits. groove with okay, it. Yeah, okay. habits. All right. Because most of the time, I just bring out a Naturia Beast and a Sandeo with my Obedient School. It's very secure, and if it's a deck that doesn't run on spells, two Sandeo. 
Um, and yeah, it's definitely suitable for a new player. It's it's not overly complicated. There are intricacies to it, but it's you you you'll get used to it. Like it's yeah. it's not complicated. It's it like it's very much like it. That's it's similar to a Deneb in a way. Yeah, it's it's, it's very simplistic, and it gets kind of used to the mechanics of the game. Um, Okay. Uh, well, the, we're just after past the 30 minute mark, and I think we just had a fantastic, uh, inf rather than a deck profile, I think more than anything, we've had a fantastic intro into the World Raccoons, how they're useful, how they're a fantastic deck, and pretty much how you can do what, which, what you want with them. There's so many options, I mean, you can choose which beasts and mix and match, and thank you for uh, your wonderful, uh, very bubbly You're personality, very funny profile, and a very cool and awesome deck. And uh, I honestly wish uh, anyone who sees this gives Raccoons a look. And fair and play, uh, this is Derma Drawing, X2, great player, uh, went fantastic at the regionals, and this is his Raccoons. Uh, thank you for watching, and peace out.